There's something almost poetic about watching a massive steel plate, thick as your fist, transform into a perfect cylinder. What we're seeing here is Kralova Polska, one of Central Europe's finest engineering firms, working their magic on a steel plate that measures 120 millimeters thick, 3,000 millimeters wide, and destined to become a cylinder with a 1, 400 millimeter diameter. Now for those of us who remember, when heavy industry was the backbone of American manufacturing, this is the kind of craftsmanship that built the world we know. The star of this operation is the faction plate rolling machine, and let me tell you, this Italian-made marvel is about as sophisticated as metalworking equipment gets. The faction company has been perfecting this craft since 1946, right after World War II, when Europe was rebuilding and needed reliable machinery to shape the infrastructure of the modern age. The machine operates on a three-roll pyramid principle, which has been the gold standard for heavy plate rolling since the Industrial Revolution, though the precision we're seeing here would astound the craftsmen of that era. Here's how this beautiful process unfolds. The steel plate, which has been preheated to reduce brittleness, gets positioned between three massive cylindrical rolls arranged in a triangular configuration. The bottom two rolls are the driving force, rotating in synchronized harmony to feed the plate through, while the top roll, which can be hydraulically adjusted with precision down to fractions of a millimeter, applies the downward pressure that creates the curve. Think of it like rolling out dough, except this dough weighs several tons and could support a building. The operator, working from a computerized control panel that would look right at home on a spacecraft, inputs the desired diameter and thickness parameters. The machine's sophisticated sensors continuously monitor the bending radius, making real-time adjustments through hundreds of hydraulic cylinders. What's remarkable is that despite handling such massive forces, the Fakken achieves tolerances that would make a Swiss watchmaker proud. The plate makes multiple passes through the rolls, each time bending just a bit more, gradually approaching that perfect cylindrical shape. This incremental approach prevents stress fractures and ensures uniform curvature along the entire length. As the plate begins its transformation, you can actually see the physics at work. The outer surface of the bend stretches, while the inner surface compresses, and the metal flows like frozen honey, maintaining its structural integrity while assuming this new form. The vaccine's pre-bending capability is particularly clever, automatically curling the plate edges before the main rolling begins, eliminating those flat spots that plagued older rolling methods. Back in the 50s and 60s, Achieving what this machine does in one setup would have required multiple operations and several different machines. Now we're watching it happen in one continuous, choreographed sequence that takes the better part of an hour but produces results that'll last generations. Step into the world of CMF, and you're stepping into a tradition that stretches back to the blacksmiths of ancient Rome. Except now we're working with hammers that make Thors look like a toy. What makes CMF's operation particularly fascinating is their combination of raw power and surgical precision. We're watching them forge pieces that can weigh up to 250 tons, and the process begins long before the hammer ever strikes. The steel ingots, fresh from the mill, get slowly heated in gas-fired furnaces to temperatures around 2-200 degrees Fahrenheit. This isn't a rush process. Depending on the size, heating can take anywhere from 8 to 24 hours. Once that steel reaches the perfect forging temperature, glowing that unmistakable orange-yellow that means it's ready to flow, the real dance begins. Massive manipulators, essentially industrial-sized robotic arms, that can rotate and position these multi-ton pieces with remarkable delicacy, move the workpiece under the forging press. CMF uses both hydraulic presses and mechanical hammers, depending on what the job requires. The hydraulic press applies slow, sustained pressure, perfect for ensuring the force penetrates deep into the core of the piece, eliminating any internal voids or inconsistencies. The mechanical hammer, on the other hand, delivers rapid blows that shape the surface and create specific forms. The forging master, a craftsman whose skills take decades to develop, orchestrates this symphony of heat and pressure. Between each strike or press, the piece gets rotated, repositioned, and sometimes reheated. It's called open die forging, because unlike closed die work, where the metal gets squeezed into a specific mold. Here, the craftsmen are literally sculpting the metal through repeated blows and pressure applications, gradually coaxing it into the desired shape. 
Each impact refines the grain structure, making the steel stronger and more reliable than anything you could achieve through casting or machining alone. Creole Forger brings us another perspective on the ancient art of forging, refined for the 21st century. This northeastern Italian company has carved out their niche in producing large, forged components for industries where failure simply isn't an option – nuclear power, oil and gas, and heavy industrial applications. Their forging presses, some capable of exerting over 8,000 tons of force, work in concert with precision heating systems that maintain exact temperature zones across the workpiece. Temperature control is absolutely critical here. Work the steel too hot, and you'll get coarse grain structure that weakens the part. Too cold, and you risk cracking. It's a Goldilocks situation that requires constant monitoring. Between forging operations, the pieces undergo controlled cooling and sometimes reheating cycles. This thermal cycling, combined with the mechanical working, is what gives forged components their superior properties. The metal's grain structure literally flows around the contours of the part, like wood grain in a carved sculpture creating natural strength along the stress lines. This isn't just manufacturing, it's creating components that might serve in critical applications for 50 years or more. When you're forging parts for a power plant turbine or deep sea drilling equipment, you're building for permanence in ways that echo the cathedral builders of medieval Europe. Now we're looking at precision on an entirely different scale with Raffamet's UBF-112N machine tool, and folks, this is where old-school craftsmanship meets space-age technology. Raffamet, a Polish company with roots going back to 1949, has been building heavy-duty machine tools through communist-era shortages and capitalist competition, and they've emerged as masters of their craft. The process begins with mounting the rough forged or cast wheel blank onto the machine's rotary table. This table, several meters in diameter, rotates with such precision that even at high speeds, vibration is minimal. The wheel gets secured with specialized fixtures that hold it perfectly centered, because if your starting point is off by even a fraction, everything that follows will be wrong. As the table rotates, the cutting tools, held in a vertical ram that can weigh as much as a small car, descend and make contact with the spinning metal. These aren't ordinary cutting bits. They're specialized carbide or ceramic inserts designed to maintain their edge even when shaving away hardened steel at temperatures that would melt butter. The cutting generates enormous forces, which is why the UBF-112N's frame is built like a fortress, cast from single pieces of iron that provide the rigidity necessary for precision work. What's remarkable is watching the machine work its way around the wheel, creating that perfect profile that'll eventually roll on thousands of miles of track. The computer numerical control system guides every movement, but there's still an operator monitoring everything, ready to adjust feeds and speeds based on how the metal is cutting. This blend of automated precision and human judgment is what separates good machining from great machining. And it's a tradition that connects today's operators with the machinists who built America's industrial might generations ago. Welcome to the Patini Group's Verona facility, where we're witnessing nothing less than the transformation of scrap metal into the steel that builds our world. This isn't your grandfather's steel mill, though the fundamental principles would be recognizable to anyone who worked in the great steel towns of Pennsylvania or Ohio during their heyday. The process begins at the electric arc furnace, a modern marble that replaced the old blast furnaces. Scrap steel, carefully sorted by grade and composition, gets loaded into this massive vessel. When the power switches on, electric arcs hot enough to vaporize steel strike between graphite electrodes and the scrap, creating a maelstrom of molten metal at temperatures exceeding 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Once melted and refined, with precise additions of alloying elements to achieve the desired properties, the molten steel flows through a ladle into the continuous casting machine. This is where the magic really happens. The molten metal enters a water-cooled copper mold where it begins to solidify from the outside in, forming a shell that's solid enough to be pulled downward by rollers while the center remains liquid. As the steel strand emerges, now solidified into a rectangular billet, it gets cut to length by automated torches that slice through the hot metal like it's warm cheese. These billets then proceed to the reheating furnace, where they're brought back up to forging temperature in a controlled atmosphere that prevents oxidation and scale formation. Temperature uniformity is critical here. You want the entire cross-section at the same temperature before rolling begins. The hot billets then enter the rolling mill, and this is where you really see the power and precision of modern steelmaking. Through a series of stands, each with progressively smaller gaps between the rolls, the steel gets squeezed and stretched, transforming from a thick square billet into a long, thin ribbon. The forces involved are tremendous, thousands of tons of pressure, yet the tolerances achieved are remarkably tight. Water sprays cool the steel between stands, and the whole process happens at speeds that would be dangerous to watch up close without protection. The final product, steel coil that might end up in everything from automotive components to construction reinforcement, gets wound onto massive reels. Each coil represents tons of steel, perfectly uniform in thickness and properties, ready to be shipped to manufacturers around the world. What we're watching is industrial efficiency that would have been considered impossible just a generation ago, yet it's built on metallurgical principles that go back thousands of years. CFT Rico Couture specializes in an absolutely fascinating niche, hot forging and forming of steel components through a process that combines tremendous force with remarkable precision. What makes their operation particularly interesting is how they've adapted traditional forging techniques to produce complex automotive and industrial components at volumes that would have been unthinkable in the old days of small batch custom forging. The process starts with steel bar stock, often delivered in coils, which gets cut to precise lengths and then fed into induction heating systems. Now, induction heating is one of those technologies that seems almost magical when you first encounter it. There's no flame, no combustion, yet within seconds, a steel billet placed within the induction coil glows cherry red, then orange, then that brilliant yellow-white that tells you it's ready for forging. The secret is electromagnetic induction, discovered by Michael Faraday back in 1831, but not practically applied to industrial heating until the early 20th century. Alternating current flowing through the coil creates a rapidly changing magnetic field, which induces electric currents in the steel itself, and those currents generate heat through resistance. It's fast, efficient, and incredibly controllable. Once heated to the optimal forging temperature, typically between 2002, 300 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the steel grade, the billet moves to the forging press. CFT uses sophisticated closed die forging, where the hot steel gets placed between two die halves that contain the negative impression of the desired part. When those dies come together with thousands of tons of force, the steel has nowhere to go but to fill every contour of that cavity. The excess material, called flash, gets squeezed out around the edges and later trimmed away. What's remarkable is the speed and precision of modern forging presses. We're talking about machines that can complete a forging cycle in just a few seconds, yet achieve dimensional tolerances that would have required extensive machining in the past. The dies themselves are engineering marvels, precision machined from special tool steels that can withstand thousands of forging cycles at extreme temperatures, without wearing significantly. After forging, the parts move through a carefully controlled cooling process. Some components get quenched in oil or water to achieve high hardness, while others undergo slower air cooling for toughness. Many then proceed to tempering furnaces, where they are reheated to moderate temperatures and held there for specific times to relieve internal stresses and achieve the optimal balance of hardness and ductility. What we're witnessing is the evolution of blacksmithing into a high-tech manufacturing process that still relies on the fundamental principle of shaping hot metal through force but with precision and consistency that old-time blacksmiths could only dream about. Thank you.
There's something deeply satisfying about watching skilled craftsmen build storage tanks, and DEEL tank infiltration systems shows us how this essential work is done right. The process begins with steel plate selection and cutting. Modern fabrication shops use CNC plasma or laser cutting tables that can slice through thick steel plate with remarkable precision, following computerized patterns that ensure minimal waste. But before any cutting happens, there's careful layout work, determining how to nest the various components to get the most out of each plate. It's a puzzle that combines geometry, efficiency, and material science. Once cut, the components move to the rolling and forming operations. Tank shells typically need to be cylindrical, which means flat plates must be rolled into curves using three roll plate vendors, similar to what we saw earlier. The edges of these rolled sections then get prepared for welding, usually with beveled cuts that allow the weld to penetrate fully through the material thickness. The welding process is where craftsmanship really shines. Tank fabrication typically uses submerged arc welding for the main seams, a process where the arc operates beneath a blanket of granular flux, protecting the weld from atmospheric contamination while allowing for deep penetration and high deposition rates. End caps, whether they're flat, dished, or hemispherical, get fitted and welded on, and then comes the real test, hydrostatic testing. The completed tank gets filled with water and pressurized beyond its working pressure to verify integrity. Any leaks or weaknesses reveal themselves here rather than in service, which could be catastrophic. The final steps include surface preparation and coating. Depending on what the tank will hold, it might receive specialized linings or external coatings for corrosion protection. What we're watching is the creation of infrastructure that might serve faithfully for decades, silent and reliable. Let's wrap up with Himalaya Machinery's three-roll plate bending operation, because there's something fundamentally impressive about watching these machines turn flat steel into curves with such apparent ease. The three-roll bending machine is one of those elegant engineering solutions that's remained fundamentally unchanged for over a century because, simply put, it works beautifully. The machine consists of three substantial rollers arranged in either a pyramid or triangle configuration. The two bottom rollers are driven rollers that grip and move the plate through the machine while the top roller, which can be adjusted up or down hydraulically, provides the bending force. The beauty of this arrangement is its simplicity and effectiveness. By varying the pressure of the top roller and making multiple passes, you can achieve a wide range of diameters and even create near-perfect circles. The process itself is mesmerizing to watch. The plate enters between the rolls, and as they rotate, you can literally see the flat material taking on curvature. For thicker plates or tighter radii, multiple passes are necessary, with each pass increasing the curvature incrementally. The machine can pre-bend the plate edges on the first pass, ensuring that the entire length achieves consistent curvature without flat spots at the ends. Modern machines like those from Himalaya Machinery can handle impressive specifications, plates up to several inches thick and many feet wide, bending them into cylinders or cones with remarkable accuracy. The rolls themselves are precision ground hardened steel, designed to maintain their shape under enormous loads. This technology represents the perfect marriage of time-tested mechanical principles with modern control systems, creating tools that are both powerful and precise, capable of shaping the steel that builds our world.